Well, everyone, I wanted to take a few seconds to give a quick overview of a feature that many users don't use or think they don't have any use for it or might not even be aware of. And that is our query builder, which is this guy right here. And you can think of the query builder if you go back to the days of when your idea of a database was maybe Microsoft Access. When you go to create a query, you would drag tables together and, and use lines to, to create relationships, and, and that would build a select statement for you. SQL Developer has the same sort of interface if you're not super familiar with or comfortable writing your own uh, SQL statements, which might look a little something like this. You know, so that that one's pretty simple, but if you want to do something a little bit more complicated, like so if I wanted to add a, a a WHERE clause here to join those. If, if you know what the referential integrity is, it's pretty simple. If you don't know, it can be a little bit of a challenge. So before I jump right into the query builder, I want to show you a, a, a trick here. I can actually take my sales and customers table and drag them into a worksheet and say give me a select um, with the join And we get this. So this assumes that you have referential integrity defined in the data dictionary with a foreign key constraint. Now mind you, this isn't the most fun thing to read, and I don't need all these columns either. This is where the query builder can come in and uh, make this a lot easier to deal with. So I'm going to toggle over to query builder. And now I can tell uh, graphically uh, SQL Developer what columns I want to see in the query. So from the sales table, I can say, don't show me anything except for uh, amount sold um, and quantity sold. And then on the customer side, I don't want to see anything but their name. And if we toggle back to worksheet, uh, the query is much simpler now, and I can run this. Actually, I can run this from the worksheet toggle. So whatever's in the worksheet will get represented in the query builder, and any change I make into the query builder gets sent back to the worksheet. So there's some of my data. Now, if I want to um, apply column aliases or where clauses or anything of that nature we come back to the query builder and down below you have the ability here to add uh, aggregates or sorts so you know, maybe we want to do uh, a descending sort on uh, amount sold but an ascending sort on last name so, you know, if we had three customers that each um, were buying $10,000 worth of materials, um, customer Brown would show up before customer Smith. Now, I also want to add a criteria uh, to amount sold. So I want to say amount sold is greater than uh, $2,000. And I could also give uh, these tables aliases. So you can right click on a table to the properties. So by default, we do alias the tables. So you can see that here where it says B and here where it says A. And you, you have that happening via that drag and drop because we don't know if there's going to be any columns overloaded. So that, you know, if there's two columns of the same name, the optimizer would get confused. So now I can run this 
query again and we come back and it looks like no one has bought more than two thousand dollars but we can make adjustments to the query as needed so the way I normally sell this feature to a user is let's say you're not going to join two tables maybe you're going to join you know 15 tables writing those um, where clauses for 15 joins would get kind of not fun and the easiest way to demo that is just to actually have the tool build up for us and I'm not going to do 15 I think maybe this is enough to give you an idea so again I'm going to say make that a join so typing this would not be fun but again I can come over here to the query builder and explicitly say what columns I want to see so I just want to see uh, unit price I just want to see um, any uh, promotion name that was applied for the sale I just want to see the product name maybe I want to see a uh, channel ID customer name what country they're in and again the sales info so amount and quantity sold so I think there are some of you out there that could type this faster than I just clicked that but I don't think there are very many of you so this is the I think the appeal of the query builder it can be a, a huge time saver and that's really what tools are for if it's not saving you time don't use it uh, the other use case I think for this is if you're brand new uh, to Oracle if you're brand new to databases in general and you can't think in terms of SQL but you can think in terms of tables and columns and relationships and joins then this can give you a nice kind of uh, crutch or jump start and I'll be honest too I don't use the query builder much more than what I've just shown you when I when I get to this point I'll generally come down here and add my own group buys my own having clauses my own sub queries I just like to use the query builder to give me the skeleton of the query to kind of do the the non fun stuff for me and that's the query builder thanks for your time